as the musicians continue to play, why don't you just offer God your best praise this morning? Come on and offer God your best praise this morning. For this is the day that the Lord has made, and we all ought to rejoice and be glad in it. Is there anybody in our virtual sanctuary, anybody via our conference call, anybody who's gathered this morning for worship, who's just come to pr uh, praise the name of the Lord? If that's you today, you ought to put your blessed hands together. For God is deserving of not just some of our praise, but God is indeed and in fact deserving of all of the praise, all of the honor, and all of the glory. Every head is bowed, every eye is closed as we now prepare our hearts and we prepare our minds for this yet another moment in worship. God, we thank you today for your goodness. We thank you today for your mercy. We thank you, O oh God, for your loving kindness. We thank you, O oh God, for just being God. And so, God, as we have gathered this morning in this virtual sanctuary, we've come today, God, to worship you in spirit and in truth. God, we pray right now that uh, we would come with hearts of thanksgiving and hearts of gratitude, God, because, God, you have indeed blessed us more than what we deserve. And for that, God, we are grateful. And so, God, we pray right now that you would breathe upon our time together, God. We pray, oh God, that this time of worship will be pleasing in your sight. We pray, oh God, that this is a time that we will not uh, be restricted, God, but a time in that we will freely worship you for the God that you are. We love you today, God. We honor you today, God. We give your name all the glory and all the praise. For this is our prayer. In the marvelous name of Jesus, we do pray. And all of God's people said, amen, amen, and amen. Well, again, my brothers, again, my sisters, we are just indeed grateful for this yet another Lord's Day. It has certainly been a week to remember. But as we have gathered today worshiping God, we come today worshiping God because God has yet shown God's self faithful yet again. And for that we are grateful. At this time we also want to take an opportunity to worship or to thank God I should say for those of us who are worshiping with us for the very first time as well as our returning guest. And so at this time, we're now going to ask that all of our first time and returning guests, that you would prepare your hearts to receive a very special welcome just for you. Pastor Corey B. Gibson and our first lady, we welcome you to our Sunday, you Sunday today. Uh, welcome. Amen. 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 We certainly, we certainly thank God today for Brother DeMario as well as our uh, praise team and our uh, youth praise dancers for leading us in worship as he has already lifted up. This is indeed our Sunday in which our youth lead us in worship. And we're so grateful that as we look ahead to our future, the future looks a little bit brighter this morning for our young people. And we're so grateful to God for each and every one of them. For all of our first time guests, we want to remain connected with you. And so we indeed would ask that you would send us a direct message this morning, uh, just sharing your contact information so that we might indeed remain connected with you. And we want to let you know today that we love you with the love of Christ. And today as we gather, we want to let you know that we give you a huge cyber hug and we tell you or we ask that you would certainly join us again. At this time, we also want to invite and encourage 
all of those who are joining with us to now prepare your hearts for this time in which we go before the throne of grace. We would ask that at this particular time you would prepare your hearts and your minds as we uh, indeed petition uh, and make our petitions known unto the Lord. And this morning, as I've already indicated, as we come this morning, we come this morning grateful. We come this morning with hearts filled with praise for what the Lord has has done. Listen, y'all, for the last four years, we might not have had one, uh, but now you all, we have a president elect. Amen. And we're so grateful to God for all of those who not only uh, took time to pray and intentionally pray for our nation, but all of those who pushed and who pressed their way to the poll to exercise not only their vote, but to exercise their voice. Certainly, uh, it is uh, a blessing to say that in my lifetime, I've had the wonderful privilege, as have you, to witness the uh, inauguration of the first African-American president of these United States. And now what a joy it is to say that we have lived long enough to see the first ever uh, vice president, African-American female vice president of these United States. And for that, we are just so grateful. And so today, it goes without saying that we pray, as we continue to pray for our nation, we pray for our president-elect uh, Biden, as well as our Vice President-elect Harris. We pray for all of those organizers and all of those who continue to find themselves on the front line as there are yet runoffs for important seats and uh, for important places uh, that have yet to be occupied. And so we continue to pray for our nation. As I stated last night on our prayer call, this is not the time for us to stop praying. But now more than ever, we need to continue to pray that the Lord would indeed uh, bring together a nation that has unfortunately been divided. This is the time that we're asking and we're seeking God's face that God would continue to indeed heal and reconcile the land. Today as we come, we also come praying for all of our veterans, all of those who served in various uh, branches uh, of the military. We come praying for all of those men and women who have tirelessly fought for the freedoms that we now have an opportunity to enjoy. And we know that Wednesday we will have an opportunity as a nation to celebrate them. But today uh, we praise and we thank God for their selfless sacrifice as well as their service to keep us safe. We also want to remember that during this time in which cases all across this uh, county, all across the nation continue to rise, we want to pray for the safety of our nation. Uh, as we continue to fight this virus known as corona. And we want to just continue that God, I uh, pray that God would continue to keep us held firmly in the palm of God's hand. Every head is now bowed, every eye is closed as we now seek the Lord's face. God, we thank you today for the wonderful privilege we have to pray. Thank you, oh God, for just being God. And thank you, God, for being God all by yourself. God, we realize that this past week was filled with various emotions, oh God. That this week that we've just come through, God, has been a week that was filled with great tension. That it was a week, oh God, filled with even great divide amongst persons within our nation. But right now, oh God, as we come to you, we come, oh God, asking that you would indeed bring us together. Unite us, O oh God. Help us, O oh God, to love once again. Help us to care for each other once again. Help us, O oh God, with your wonderful hand to, to lead us in the direction that you would have us to go. Oh, we're so grateful, God, today that you have sent a leader, God, that can help restore this nation, that we believe, oh God, will keep their word. But God, we're so grateful that, God, you have ultimately the last say-so. 
And we're so grateful, God, that it is your hand that continues to not only hold this nation, but it is your hand that continues to guide us. And so right now, in the name of Jesus, we pray that, God, you would not only be with us and that you would not only guide us, but that, God, you would give us that strength that only comes from you. That strength, God, to hold on. That strength, God, to yet do our part. That strength, God, that will continue to remain focused, God, on the issues yet at hand. That strength, oh God, that will keep us when we yet feel weak. That strength, God, that reminds us that we can indeed go on. And so, God, we pray right now for not only our nation, but we pray, oh God, for this world. That as we continue, God, to fight this deadly virus known as Corona, God, that you would indeed help us to exercise wisdom. That you, oh God, will help us to remain safe. That, God, you would help us not to take it lightly, God, but that you would help us to look out for our brothers and sisters. Knowing, God, that when we look out for them, that, God, we demonstrate in a real sense how you look out for us. So, God, continue to be with us. Be with all of those families now who yet find themselves during this time that is known as bereavement. Those persons, God, who yet reside on their beds of affliction. Those, God, who are just trying their leveled best to make it from day to day. Oh, God, we pray that you would not only be with us and be with them, but, God, we pray today that we would continue to seek your face like never before. Because, God, we know that if we seek your face, God, you will keep us safe. We know, oh, God, that if we continue to lift up your name, you'll continue to lift us up from our places of hurt and despair. That, God, if we continue to stay closely connected unto you, you'll let us know, God, that you will never leave us, nor will you forsake us. So, God, be with us, guide us, and bless us as only you can. And, God, we didn't need yesterday to happen for us to shout victory. But, God, we thank you right now for the victory that was already won with your son Jesus. And so today, God, we shout thank you. We shout, God, the victory. We shout hallelujah for everything that you've done, everything that you're doing right now, and even those things that we've yet to see. For this is our prayer today. In your wonderful son Jesus' name do we pray. And all of God's people said amen, amen. And amen. As our praise team prepares to come forward, why don't you just put your blessed hands together and thank God for who God is today. I know we can thank God for what God has done, and certainly we thank God for what God has done. But you ought to just take a moment right where you are today and just begin to offer thanks and praise to our good and gracious God.
What a beautiful reminder it is to know that when our lives are in the hands of the Lord, we don't have to live lives in worry. 
when our lives are in the hand of the Lord, we know that we can make it. We know that whatever comes our way, we can take it. And we're just so grateful to serve a God like that. I guess some would even ask the question, who wouldn't serve a God like this? Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1. As we continue in our series entitled Moving Forward, I want to call your attention back to Joshua chapter 1. And I just want to lift up verse 9 in your hearing. Now I know that there are only a few who've gathered in the physical space to worship. But yet there are those who have joined in virtually. But I think that this is a good Sunday to talk back to the preacher. <laughs> and I also think that this is a good Sunday for us to worship God freely. Every Sunday indeed is a Sunday that we ought to come ready to hear from the Lord. Every Sunday indeed is a Sunday in which we ought to come Praise the name of the Lord. As a matter of fact, daily is a great time. But I think that today we have a lot to thank God for. So Joshua chapter 1, as we continue in this series entitled Moving Forward, I just want to lift up one verse in your hearing. Verse number 9. Verse number 9 of the first chapter of the, gospel, excuse me, of the book of Joshua reads this way from the New Revised Standard Version. I hereby command you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Amen. The grass withers, the flowers do fade, but the word of our God shall indeed stand forever. For the time that is ours to share this morning, I want to talk from the subject, simply worry is not an option, part two. Part two of worry is not an option. Uh, there may be some who are joining us today saying, after everything that we experienced this week, you come with part two of worry is not an option. Well, just in case that's you today, just in case you fall into that category, uh, you can use the title, I'm still not worried. I'm still not worried. But, but for all of us others, we're going to do worry is not an option, part two. But, but it all has the same, the same connotation. Worry, worry is not an option. In every season and in every situation, you better believe, child of God, that God still speaks. You ought not ever for one moment think in your mind that God isn't perpetually at work and that God is not providing a word for God's people. But God, I believe, it's safe to say, continuously speaks through God's word. I know that this is true and I don't believe that I'm by myself, but I believe that there are some people in worship today. There are some people who have come today to worship God who can say that I know it's true. That I've seen the Lord, my God, at work. And I've heard and I've experienced God's word in my life. And I believe that it's safe to say that that's where Joshua put his firm trust in. I believe that it's safe to say that that's what Joshua stood upon within this passage of scripture. As Joshua experienced firsthand how God still speaks even during the most interesting, difficult, and precarious situations. That's why my brothers, that's why my sisters, Joshua 
doesn't begin, or the first chapter of Joshua does not begin with the people pledging their commitment to Joshua. That's why I believe that it does not begin, as we will see in the middle portion of this first chapter, with Joshua sharing his plan that consisted of great clarity. But instead, this transitioning season that Joshua now found himself faced with, this season that Joshua was now preparing to enter into, this season that contained great uncertainty, was a time in which it begins not with Joshua even speaking unto the Lord, but it begins with the Lord speaking unto Joshua. And it begins with Joshua, more importantly, sitting still long enough in order to hear what thus saith the Lord. Oh, now faced with the uncertainty of the future that was ahead of him and all that awaited not only Joshua but the people of Israel as we explored last week, uh, this was an interesting season as it was a period of uh, transition. It was not only a time and a period of transition as Joshua prepared to take over for his predecessor Moses and to continue where he had left off, but it was a time in which the people experienced a change and a transition in power. Oh, my brothers and sisters, they did what was customary after the death of a leader during that day and time in that they took a moment moment to grieve because you do understand that the grieving process is certainly important uh, as we prepare to go into the future of what God uh, expects for us. But after the people grieved, the Bible tells us over in Deuteronomy that after they grieved in the plains of Moab uh, for 30 days, uh, they quickly moved from a place of mourning uh, to a place where they had to move forward. And I I would contend today, my brother, I would contend today, my sister, that this change in power for all intents purposes uh, was a peaceful transfer of power. I say it not because Moses was resting in peace, uh, uh, not because Moses had simply slipped into eternity, but because Moses, before Moses left, uh, Moses ensured that he poured uh, into the one who would precede him. Moses ensure that he would help pave the way so that when he was no longer there the people wouldn't crumble the people uh, wouldn't start to go their own separate ways uh, but the people would indeed continue uh, on their pursuit and can I tell you today my brother can I tell you today my sister that that's how great leaders conduct themselves <laughs> that's how strong leaders uh, conduct themselves that's how mature leaders uh, conduct themselves. Uh, they recognize their own mortality. They recognize that they're not going to be in their positions uh, forever. Uh, they don't sit around pouting, uh, but instead they prepare uh, for what's next and what lies ahead. Uh, they don't pretend as if they're exempt uh, from this time from occurring, uh, but instead they accept the reality uh, of when it's time for them to go uh, and when it's time for them to move on uh, and allow the next person uh, to take the reins. I wish I had some help in here today because this was a time, my brothers and sisters, uh, that's similar to the time that we face now. Uh, it was a period of great transition. Uh, it was a period filled with various emotions. Uh, it was a period in which fear uh, perhaps crept into the heart of many of the pe uh, people of Israel. Uh, it was a time in which there was great uncertainty even uh, from Joshua uh, as we can imagine as he prepared uh, to take upon uh, this new assignment. Uh, but oh, I'm glad today my brothers and sisters uh, that even during this time of great transition, um, even during this time uh, in which there was great uncertainty, uh, God shows Joshua that it was still a period uh, filled with purpose. 
is, uh, that that's where we hung our attention last week, uh, that we don't have to worry. We don't have to find ourselves uh, in a state of panic during moments of transition uh, because we still uh, have purpose. More specifically, uh, we've been purposed uh, to continue. That was the point that I lifted last week. Uh, we've been purposed to continue uh, as the Lord speaks to old Joshua and he says to him in verse number two, uh, because I'm still in your Bible, uh, that my servant Moses is dead. Uh, now proceed. Uh, he says, now proceed to cross the Jordan, uh, you and all the people. Uh, now proceed. Uh, some translations there say, therefore arise. Uh, some translations say, now get ready or get ready now. Uh, but that compilation of words, that arrangement of words, now proceed, therefore and rise, get ready. They all simply in the original language mean uh, one thing uh, which is to stand up. Uh, that in essence God was telling Joshua, God was was telling Joshua that he and he tells us today uh, that that now was not a time uh, that we can afford to simply uh, sit down in our seats of do nothingness. Uh, now was not the time uh, for us to sit back like everything was all right. Uh, now is not the time uh, when we can afford to even sit uh, and wallow in worry or in sadness. Uh, but now was a time uh, in which we have to stand up uh, and we have to keep showing up. Uh, and I don't know who needs to hear this today, uh, but somebody needs to know that you've been sitting still uh, far too long. You uh, haven't been pursuing the purpose that God has you for far too long. You uh, have yet to reach the dreams that God has given unto you for far too long. Uh, but now it's time for you to understand uh, that you too have been purposed to continue. Uh, and in understanding that you've been purposed to continue, it's time for you to now proceed. It's time for you to now stand up and to keep pushing forward. And what was so interesting about it, as we noted last week, was that it was not only important for Joshua to now proceed and to push his way forward, but it was important for the people whom he now would lead to move forward. Not only so that they could fulfill their purpose, but so that they can continue the work that was started uh, by those who had gone on and uh, so that they could help pave the way uh, for future generations. Uh, that it was time for them to keep moving. Uh, it was time for them to keep marching ahead. Uh, it was time for them not to just simply sit around. Uh, but now they had to march on uh, for those who had marched prior and for those who would pick up the mantle. Uh, and that's why even on this morning uh, I get excited when I see our young people like Demario and I see our young people like Jewel and I see our young people uh, uh, like Damani and I see our young uh, people like my little girl KK and I see young people like my big brother over there Jared. I get excited about it because it lets me know uh, that I can't stop where I am now uh, but I gotta continue moving forward even for them. Oh, oh yeah, and that's why I'm so grateful that their future, as I've already stated, looks a little bit brighter. All this week, oh, all this week, we've been hearing the question, maybe not you, but I've been getting the question all last week, I should say. I got the question more times than I would have liked to count of people asking, Pastor, what are you going to do after Tuesday? That, 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 was, that was the question that I got last week and, and got in the weeks that uh, led into last week. People asking, what are you going to do? What, what are you going to do if they reelect that man? What, what are you going to do if uh, Biden, excuse me, excuse me, I got to get used to saying it, President-elect Biden and Vice President-elect Harris occupy the Oval Office? And I had to give them the same response that no matter who comes into leadership, I have to keep on living. And somebody needs to hear that today, that you too have to keep 
on living. And the reason why you have to keep on living, child of God, uh, is because our living uh, is not contingent uh, upon who's in leadership. Oh no, it might be influenced by it, uh, but it is never subjected to it. Uh, and so as a result, we have to continue living the lives that we live. Uh, lives that are not filled with mediocrity, but lives that are filled uh, with abundance. And can I tell you why we live lives filled with abundance? It's not because of the news we heard yesterday. It's not because of who's in leadership now. It's not because of even what we've done. But we can live in abundance because of what was secured way back on the cross of Calvary. That, that was the word spoken unto Joshua by Yahweh. That was the word spoken by Joshua by the Lord. That Joshua, you were purpose to continue. That you can't stop right now, but that you have to keep on going. But I'm so grateful that when the Lord speaks to Joshua and he speaks of this purpose, uh, the Lord didn't stop there. But the Lord let him know that even as you walk in your purpose, uh, there's some things that I will provide you. Huh? And can I just give you the one thing that the Lord assures him of uh, in those preceding verses uh, in verses 3 through verse 9 can I share with you uh, the one thing that the Lord offers Joshua which the Lord offers us today uh, to let us know uh, that worry is still not an option uh, that we still don't have to worry uh, even with the uncertainty of what's ahead uh, he lets Joshua know Joshua yes you've been purposed to continue uh, now now I need you uh, to press forward. But then he tells Joshua, Joshua, in addition to you having this purpose, I'm going to provide you with a promise. But more specifically, I'm going to provide you, and this is all I have today, I'm going to provide you with a promise you can count on. That, that, that's what he gives them. He, he says, you've been purposed to continue, but, but you can move forward now because of the promise that I'm giving you that you can count on. You have a promise that you can count on. And child of God, I want to tell you today that if you want to know how you're going to make it, even with the uncertainty that yet exists, you can make it not because of what you possess, but you can make it because of the promise that God has given you that you can count on. Oh, I know today, my brother, I know today, my sister, there are a whole lot of things that we can't count on in this world. I know that you know a couple of people, uh, some family members and some friends uh, that you surely know you can't count on. Uh, oh, and I know we don't want to talk about counting uh, for a long time. I know last week uh, we were all counting and all tabulating. Uh, we were all uh, sitting in front of the television. I know last week you've seen more numbers counted and more numbers crunched and maps analyzed to the point where CNN John King helped us all to get a degree. But let me tell you this, if you can't count on anything else, <laughs> you can certainly count uh, on the promises of God. Uh, God gives a promise unto Joshua within verses 3 through 9. Uh, he says, every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, uh, I have given to you uh, as I promised Moses uh, he tells them that it's not just the promise that I've given to you but it's the promise that I've given unto your ancestors uh, not the ancestors that we simply sit and try to call upon when we don't see victory either yeah yeah but 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 no I'm going to give you the promise that I've given unto Moses and it's the same promise that I give unto you what I like about that promise that he gives unto him is that he lets him know, listen, Joshua, you now not only have the right to what I'm going to give you in terms of this promise, but now in addition to the right to receive all of this, you now have great responsibility. And some of us just knew that this was going to serve as just as a shouting Sunday. But you need to understand, my brothers and sisters, that in order for us to really make progress, uh, we can't just simply shout and not expect uh, to not stand and do our part. 
But he tells Joshua, listen, now that you're now going to pick up the helms and move forward, now that you're going to walk into what tomorrow will hold, as I promised Moses over in Exodus, I'm going to tell you that I'm going to take you as my people, and I will be your God. He starts to have these promises, and within this promise that he can count on, it includes a couple things. It, it includes a place or places that are predetermined. He says in verse number three, every place that the sole of your foot will trod upon, I've given as I promised to you. But in verse number four, he says, from the wilderness and the Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, the great sea in the west shall be your territory. The great land that he had for him was very expansive. God tells Joshua, Joshua, I've already predestined some places for you. Joshua, I already have some great things for you and for the people. But Joshua, understand that you still have to do your part. When, when, when I talk about predestined, again, God had already cleared land. God had already had territory that would be occupied by the people of Israel. But notice what he says to him in verse 3. He says, every place that the sole of your foot will trod. He, he says, I have this for you, but it's going to require you to tread on some places. Simply put, it's going to require you not to just sit around and say, it's mine. But it's going to require you to move your feet. <laughs> and, and that's where many of us get caught up. We want the promise of predestined places, but we don't want to do our part. Uh, we want more from God, but we want less commitment. We want to ask God for what God is going to do to help us get through the situations of our lives. But little, I let, a little do we stop to sit and ask what God wants to, what God wants from us. The Lord says, I've already outlined some places for you, and all you have to do is demonstrate your faithfulness uh, to keep on treading uh, and to keep on trusting uh, in the face of trouble. Uh, and is there anybody in the virtual sanctuary uh, who can thank God today uh, that you've learned how to do your part? Is there anybody who can thank God today uh, that you've learned that, yes, there are some places uh, that are already predetermined? There are some places that God has already preordained for you to have, but you've learned that you got to do your part to receive it. Oh, he says, yes, I have some promises that you can count on. And within this promise that you can count on, it not only contains places that are predetermined, but it also, within this promise you can stand on, it also contains power, watch this, over the enemy's plan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, it has power over the enemy's plan. Verse number five says, no one shall be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave nor forsake you. He says, Joshua, as you move forward. There are some places, yes, that I've given unto you. But Joshua, don't you fool yourself for one moment into believing that it's going to be easy within this journey. He, he says, Joshua, I know I've given you some places. I know I've given you a great charge. Joshua, I know I've given you a great responsibility. But understand that it's going to come with some people who provide pushback. And it's not personally Joshua to you. But Joshua, you've seen how the people responded with Moses. You saw, Joshua, how there were people who gave Moses a hard time. So don't you think, Joshua, that you're exempt from those types of games 
that the enemy plays. As a matter of fact, don't you believe that you're not going to receive it worst? Don't you, don't you believe for one moment, Joshua, that you're not going to become a target for the enemy because now you're moving forward. Oh, moving forward towards the place of promise, you need to know, my brother, you need to know, my sister, is fuel for the enemy to devise tactics to destroy you. The more you move closer to God and the more you move closer to what God has for you and where God has called you to, know that the more you upset the enemy. Don't, don't, don't ever feel like God has simply singled you out and is picking on you every time you look around and you see or you feel like you're always under attack from the enemy. Because hear this and hear me well. If you didn't have anything to offer, the enemy wouldn't have anything to go after. Did, did, did you hear what I said? If you didn't have anything to offer, the enemy wouldn't have anything to go after. The enemy wouldn't try to suppress you the way the enemy tries to. The enemy wouldn't try to make you feel inadequate like the enemy does. The enemy wouldn't make you think that the Lord cares about you the way the enemy has tried. But rest assured, my brother, rest assured, my sister, that because of the anointing on your life, because of the way God has blessed you and where God has called you to and what God has called you to do, uh, that makes you a target for the enemy. Oh, but he says, Joshua, <laughs> don't, don't, don't you worry about any of that. <laughs> He, 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 he even does this. He doesn't even mention the enemy's names because you do understand that some of the enemies that we face, uh, they don't consist of flesh and blood. That, that, that's Bible right there. They, they don't consist of flesh and blood for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities and against power and against rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. But he says no matter what kind of plan the enemy has understand I've still given you the promise you can count on uh, in that you still will have power over the enemy's plan. But he says Joshua you're not going to be able to do it by yourself. He says, Joshua, you're not going to be able to handle it by yourself. Huh? But he goes on in verses 6 through 8 huh, to give him the blueprint huh, of that plan to receive the power over the enemy's plan. Because it's in verses 6 through 8 huh, that he says, now this is what I need you to do, Joshua. I need you to understand that you can't pay the enemy any mind. But you have to be led by me. I'm going to hold you down just like I held it down for Moses. I, I'm not going to go anywhere. I still have your back. You don't have to try to figure out where I am or, or if I'm near you. All you have to do is be strong and be courageous huh, and act like you know I'm there. He says, but just in case huh, it starts to feel that I'm not around, Joshua, what I need you to do uh, is to stay in that word. <laughs> that, that's what he says. He says, I just need you to stay in the word. You might not remember everything I'm giving you now. You might not be able to retain everything I'm throwing at you now because it's so coming so quick at you, Joshua. But Joshua, I just need you to read. He, he says, I just need you to read the law. I just need for you to read from the Torah. I just need for you to continue to keep your face in the book. I just need for you to continue to stay in my word because if you stay in my word, you'll discover that you don't have anything to worry about. 
Oh, he says, as a matter of fact, huh, if you don't turn from it on your right or on your left, huh, you will see that I will give you prosperity and I'll give you success. Huh? Now, don't you leave out of here thinking that he just tells Joshua, Joshua, if you stay in my word, I'm going to give you power over the enemy that will help you to get nice, luxurious things huh, and to have your name lifted up in lights. Huh? No, when he speaks of the prosperity and success here, huh, he doesn't define it like the world defines it, huh? but he talks about a uh, gain. He talks about uh, gaining wisdom. He talks about gaining insight. He talks about gaining access and understanding of who God is. He says, listen, Joshua, you can have power over the enemy, but you got to make sure you put your face in the book. Huh? And I don't know who needs to hear this, but you can't just pick up that book huh, when times are rough huh, and expect for that book to just talk to you. Huh? Oh, you can't treat that book huh, just like a cookbook when you need a recipe to find huh, because you bored of what you've been having huh, that you go to it. No, you need to keep your face huh, in the book. Huh. You need to read it for yourself. presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I tell you, keep on reading the book because when you keep on reading the book, you'll know that sometimes you'll get weak. Sometimes you'll need a little bit of strength and the word will tell you when you keep your head in the book huh, that God is our refuge and strength huh, a very present help in the time of trouble huh? oh just keep your head in the book huh? sometimes you will feel like Lord I've been waiting for too long huh? but when you keep your head in the book huh, the book will tell you that they that wait upon the Lord huh, shall renew their strength huh? they shall mount up with wings as eagles huh? they shall run and not be weary. Huh? They shall walk and not faint. Huh? I know you may feel like you're suffering right now, huh? but when you keep your head in the book, huh, you'll discover power huh, that says, huh, but the God of all grace, huh, who hath called us into his eternal glory huh, by Christ Jesus, huh, that after you've suffered uh, a while, huh, he'll make you perfect. Huh? He'll establish, huh, he'll 
he'll strengthen uh, and he'll settle uh, he'll settle you uh, it's the word that tells us uh, that when you're scared uh, that you might fall uh, now uh, unto him uh, that's able to keep you from falling uh, and present you faultless uh, before his presence with exceeding joy uh, to the only wise God our Savior uh, be glory uh, majesty uh, dominion and power uh, both now and forever uh, I'm through here now y'all uh, may the Lord God bless you real good uh, but let me tell somebody uh, that the Lord will give you a promise uh, that you can count on uh, he'll give you a promise uh, that you can stand firm on uh, he'll give you a promise uh, that you won't have to worry uh, within that promise uh, there are places that are predetermined uh, within that promise uh, there's power over the enemy's plan uh, but within that promise uh, understand uh, that there's protection uh, wherever you proceed uh, have I got a witness in here today uh, he tells Joshua uh, wherever you go uh, the Lord your God uh, will be with you uh, and that's all I want to leave somebody with today uh, just know uh, that wherever you go uh, the Lord uh, will be with you uh, he didn't just make that promise uh, over to Joshua and Moses uh, but it was a promise uh, that he gave to Jacob uh, it was a promise uh, he would give to Gideon uh, it was a promise uh, he would give to the Jewish exiles uh, as they returned from Babylonian captivity uh, and it was a promise uh, that became revealed uh, over in the New Testament uh, with his son Jesus uh, the one uh, that they would call Emmanuel uh, that is God uh, is with us uh, and I don't know about you today uh, but I get excited uh, just knowing God uh, is yet with us uh, God uh, has been with us uh, God will be with us uh, wherever you go uh, so stand uh, on his promise uh, stand uh, on his word uh, hold uh, to God's unchanging hand uh, I know we're in the midst uh, of a transition uh, but time is filled uh, with swift transition uh, not on earth uh, unmoved can stand uh, but build your hopes uh, on things eternal uh, and hold to God's uh, unchanging hand uh, will you hold to his hand uh, will you hold to his hand uh, come what will in your life uh, will you hold to his hand uh, if you're gonna hold to his hand uh, shout yeah shout yeah shout yeah shout yeah some of y'all shouted louder yesterday with the results but I dare you just to shout right now like you know the God you serve will be with you wherever you go wherever you go shout yeah gives us a promise that we can count on whole lot of things will come our way even after today. Let's not fool ourselves into believing that everything now is back aligned. Let's not forget now that we still have some responsibility to uphold because the promises of God are not void of our participation. And so it's important, my brothers and sisters, that we continue to hold to the promises of God for their promises that we can count on. But as you do it, my brother, as you do it, my sister, I ask you to do it knowing that the Lord is yet able. Amen and amen. At this time, we want to invite and we want to encourage those who have yet to connect with that promise-making, promise-keeping God, we want to invite and encourage you to do so. We want to let you know again that the love God has for us is so strong, it's so deep, that he lets us know that wherever we go, he'll be with us. 
But it's important for us to just grab a hold of them. God's already done his part in sending his son Jesus to die on the cross of Calvary for our sins. Allowing him to be buried and rising again on the third day. But we want to invite and we want to encourage you now to just say yes to the Lord. To confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is the Son of God. If that's you today, my brother. If that's you today, my sister, and you've yet to say yes to the Lord, again, we want to let you know that today is no better day. There's no greater weekend to say that you've accepted Christ into your heart. And so, if that's you today and you just want to know more about what does this promise keeping God, what, what else is required of me? What, what else do I need to do? We would ask that you would just submit us your contact information, either if you're watching us via our Facebook Live inside of our direct messenger, or if you desire to even share with us via our website, you can also go there and under contact us, you can complete the form. But we want you to know that today, if you said yes, that we believe by faith that you are indeed saved. And all of God's people said amen and amen. Come on and let's put our hands together and thank God for God's word. Again, my brother, again, my sister, we're just grateful for what God is yet doing in this season, not only in the life of our country, but even within our community and within our congregation. And we want to let you know that as we continue to follow where God is even leading us, we know that there's still more work for us to do. And the only way that we can continue to carry that assignment that is yet ahead of us is if we continue, yes, to pray and we continue to seek God's face within God's word, but understand, too, that we also have to continue to contribute to the work of ministry. And so at this time, we want to continue to worship God through that of giving. As always, we remind you that there are three ways in which you can give. First and foremost, you can give by downloading the app Givelify and giving uh, via that easy app. Or if you desire to go to our church's website, you can go there and simply on our home screen at the top, you'll see an icon that says give. Click there and it will walk you through those safe and easy steps. And then third and finally, if you just desire to come and you desire to uh, bring your offering in, again, wearing your mask, of course, uh, and being uh, cautious, but you may also do so on Tuesday between 9 and 5 p.m. But again, we want you to know in advance that we thank God for you today and we thank God for your contribution. One more time, let's thank God for how God has spoken today and how God has moved in this place. Help me thank and praise God one more time for our young people praise team, praise dancers, pay and dancers. Amen. The praise team said that they will take an honorary young people's praise team today. And so we thank God for our praise uh, team today. Let's thank and praise God for them. Amen. Amen. As well as all of those who have led us today in worship. Again, my brothers and sisters, if you have yet to register for our Saturday supper, you have until Friday. Friday, uh, this Friday the 13th at noon is the deadline. You have until Friday at noon to register for our Saturday supper. I am uh, just excited about the number of individuals who have already responded, uh, but we want to let you know that we want to continue to be a blessing not only to the co uh, congregation, but to the community as well. And so if you know someone who would benefit tremendously from this meal that we will deliver uh, the Saturday prior to that of Thanksgiving, 
we would ask that you would please register by this Friday at noon. In addition to that, we want to let you know that this Saturday is our Stewardship and Financial Literacy Seminar. You do not want to miss this time. It is uh, a, a, a ministry opportunity that is free for all of those who desire to be a part uh, the Zoom link will go out uh, starting tomorrow, but you do not want to miss this opportunity, uh, one in which you certainly would ordinarily have to pay for, uh, but one in which our facilitator and uh, faithful member here at Calvary, Sister Letitia Officer, has said, Pastor, I just want to do this to help my people uh, to not only weather the storm, financial storms that they may be experiencing now, but to help them prepare uh, for this next season. The holidays are almost here, and we can fool ourselves into believing that we're not going to spend uh, but we want to make sure that we continue uh, to be good stewards over what God has entrusted us with. So Sister Letitia Officer, uh, the CEO and owner of uh, Financial Jevity, she will facilitate with us this Saturday at noon. Please make sure that you are a part. Also, we want you to mark your calendar for uh, the 17th, November 17th at 6.30 p.m. as we will have our first installment of our Grief Support Information. All right. A lot has transpired throughout 2020. There are a lot of individuals who are grieving in different ways. Grief is not only found in the loss of a loved one, but grief comes on a number of ways. And so we want you to be a part of this informational in which we'll have more information in the coming weeks uh, for the 17th of this month at 6.30. Amen and amen. Again, we want to thank and praise God for even all of our November anniversaries. If you're celebrating a wedding anniversary during this month, we would ask that you would just drop us a note, drop us a line, letting us know when that date is. And again, we want to continue to pray for you and your significant other, that as God continues to bless you uh, with another year together, uh, that it will be another year in which it will draw you stronger and closer to each other as well as demonstrate more love. And then finally, my brothers and sisters, we want to make sure uh, that we celebrate all of our veterans. If you know uh, veterans that have served our uh, nation faithfully, please make sure that you don't just wait until uh, Wednesday to tell them thank you, uh, but tell them thank you even beginning today for their service, for their sacrifice in helping to keep our nation safe. I pray that each and every one of you will continue to take that same energy Energy that we had yesterday and walk into this brand new week knowing that again God is still providing a word and God is still working 